All right, all right, all right. We are live. Hello, Facebook. Hello, hello, hello. I'm joined by Brian Sousa and Chuck Fazio. We are here to talk about that infamous phrase, commission splits. And then uh, we're also going to talk about um, uh, uh, agent attraction uh, and, and recruiting and retraining t uh, retaining talent. So uh, uh, and Chuck's going to Chuck's going to use his infinite wisdom to help uh, help create a paradigm shift with our audience today. So I'm really excited about that. Chuck and I had a, an opportunity to connect uh, on a phone call earlier today and talked about what we wanted to discuss. Um, so I won't give any of that away, but um, I, I do want to preface this by saying um, that uh, we understand that, you know, commissions are different in every market and, and this is in no way, shape or fashion um, uh, intended to, um, uh, influence the way people charge commissions. Uh, we're simply talking about percentages today uh, and in the context of whatever commissions are in your market. So, um, I, you know, take that with with uh, with a grain of salt. And, um, you know, with that being said, uh, Brian, you posted something in the Facebook group, um, uh, our Honey Badger group, a couple, maybe a couple days ago, and, and Chuck and I both responded to it in the context of you know, well, what are what are people? What are top team leaders? How are they? How are they? Um, you know, give, given their respective models. So there's obviously there's EXP, right, which we're involved in fully, and and you know there are other uh, obviously other models where people are running teams: Keller Williams, Cole Banker, Berkshire Hathaway. I mean, ABC Realty, whatever, right? And and so what you, the question is like, how are top team leaders? Um, how are they, how are they compensating their agents? What in their respective model? And yeah, so, yeah, so basically the question is this, is that, you know, when you're talking to someone about the EXP opportunity, uh, when you have someone like Chuck Fazio, who's have billions of dollars of sold, had one of the largest, uh, brokerages in the United States, you know, 800 plus agents. And at the end of the day, decided to move over to EXP. The big question is why? Number one. Number two is how do you handle the current commission splits that are in play or in 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 force with your agents so that your agents don't get affected, but actually benefit from the move? And importantly, as the brokerage owner, how do you don't affect your bottom line by the move? So that's the big question when you're when you're sharing the opportunity. There are several brokerages in our local market and outside of our local market that are chatting with me about this. And that's the big question is. How is this a win for our agents and how is it a win for my PL's bottom line? All right, Chuck, don't answer that because I know where you're gonna go already, buddy. Okay. And I, I do want to address the 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 um the commission part of this because I, I, there are people that will tune in here that do want to know um, you know, how to compensate their agents. And I so certainly I don't want to minimize that. Um and and Brian, to your point, um obviously we we were when we made the move, we we came over on a mega agent icon agreement and that allowed us some flexibility uh, in our compensation structure uh, for some different things that we wanted to do. Um, we, and this will speak to a, to a little bit about what I know Chuck's going to get into is we wanted the, the compensation was part of the value that we wanted to bring to our team when we made the move, right? We didn't, we didn't, we wanted to make the move, but we didn't want it entirely to be about, you know, the payment structure. We wanted to create right. benefit through uh, other means, right? Th through adding opportunities for, for revenue share, for adding opportunities through long-term wealth and passive income, right? Through adding opportunities through, yeah. um, uh, through education and, and creating an environment of learning, right? So there's so many different components of that when you're talking about adding value, but specifically to your point, right? We did rearrange our, our compensation structure when we made the move. Uh, when we came over from Keller, we were at a uh, we were at a twenty four thousand dollar cap, uh, you know, full disclosure. And our agents uh, were on a uh, on a quarter cap. And then they have a three thousand dollar royalty that they paid into Keller Williams. Right. It was a good pay plan. Right. We were yeah. we never had a problem with the way that that was structured. And. You know, the long and the short of it is we the way we 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 compensated our agents on team leads was just a straight 50 50. OK, we just we had a straight 50 right. 50 yeah. commission spread right. on team generated business. And then if it was an ISA generated lead, then the agent would pay a 25 percent referral of their half of the commission. OK, so if it's if it's a ten thousand dollar commission. Then, you know, split down the middle, it was 50-50, 5,000 to the team, 5,000 to the agent, and then 25% and then came out of that 5% uh, 
that went to the team member to, to compensate the ISA, if that makes sense, okay? So that was one part of the structure. And then for self-generated business, we were doing a 60-40, right? And we let our agents, some people run a different model. Some people agents let, they, they, just, they just have buyer agents. Some people have showing agents. Our model, we let our agents list and sell, right? They're, 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 they're licensed real estate agents, so we let them do it all. Right. And, 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 and so we, what we did from that structure, that was the foundation, right? And what we build our compensation structure on at Keller Williams. And then what we did from there was we, um, we, we moved into a graduated commission structure where we essentially, we would allow on team generated business where their first two deals would be at a 50, 50 commission split and then their second two deals. So if they got to four deals, they would move up to 55. So deals right. three and four would be at 55 and then deals five and six would actually move up to 60 and then it would cap at 60. Right. And, and then, and then the, what we did from, uh, from the standpoint of a, of a self-generated business, is that we, we started them off at 60%. And, and the idea was we wanted them, we were happy with them doing more self-generated business and we wanted them to reward them for that because of the, the expense associated with buying leads, right? With buying internet leads, with buying Zillow leads, with, with buying any leads, um, you know, that wasn't there when they were generating their own business. So, um, so what we did from that aspect is we, we said, okay, um, I live in a market where in Southwest Ohio, where, you know, the average sale price is roughly $140,000, you know, right. if we're lucky. So if what we would do is we would take our compensation structure and say, okay, if an agent had a full year and they sold $5 million worth of real estate, well, that six, second year, they, they would move up to a 65% commission split on their self-generated business, right? So, and then they would maintain that. And if they sold 8 million, they would move up to 70, right? And so forth and so on. And then we capped it at 70 or 75, I believe is what it was. So hopefully that gives you some sort of a baseline. Yeah, um, so that is really good because you're from Keller Williams originally and I'm from Remax. And at Remax, what we did with our team is we had a 50-50 split on any leads that we generated. Here's 10,000 leads, go, go after them. And then on uh, deals that they were their own personals, either their own family members or close friends, it was all 70, 30. And that's how we operated. But EXP starts at 80% commission. You had to start at 80% commission. So did Chuck. So did I. And that's a big question about, okay, so I'm going down to 80% commission. And then how do the new agents that we're bringing on board with EXP with our current splits, how do they, how do they, um, balance that out that's that's the big question and i think chuck as an independent could probably add a lot of value to this conversation too so so the value i, I spin it a little different way and i know um that most people do i've i've coached and mentored thousands of agents in my career and the one thing that that i always say although splits are something that people look at the way i look at it as a businessman and, and everybody in real estate's a business person is what are you actually taking home what are you actually making? And if I said to you, hey, you could be at a brokerage that you're going to get 100% of your commission, but you're only doing one deal a year, <laughs> or as opposed to you work with me at 50% of your commission, and you're going to do 30 deals a year, well, obviously, it's clear which one you would choose. So I think the mindset, in my opinion, the reason what it drew me to EXP is, is the value of what we're really looking at here is real estate. What makes EXP a viable real estate company? Because because I just laugh at people that go, well, they're, they're just a bunch of recruiters trying to sell you on residual income. <laughs> and who's selling real estate? And I'm like, seriously, who's selling real estate? Look at our friggin' numbers that we're bringing in here. Yeah. So so when, when I look at, you know, when I had my agents at my brokerage, and we've, we let in with value, value in training, value with whatever we could support them with. That any brokerage has to lead in with that. But what I'm watching more and more is this dog and pony show that these companies are telling you they have value, telling you get training, whatever the split may be, trying to justify it. But at the end of the day, there's companies like Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, Brian Buffini. These are outside companies training our agents 
and people are paying thousands for that, which to me is, is kind yeah, of the that, biggest joke yeah. in the industry because we are the industry. Why are we providing already that for our agents where they're spending the thousands outside? And these companies are making a lot of money. Yes, so are. I say yeah. the reason what drew me to EXP is when I got to have a conversation with Jay Kinder, mm -hmm. who I've known for years and what he did, and on a Sunday afternoon, me and him talked for hours, and I'm in this industry to help people. And I'm going to take my knowledge and my skill set that maybe Brian... If I was never at EXP, you'd never have the opportunity to Absolutely. sit and pick up the phone and call me and say, Chuck, I just want to pick your brain. I could charge thousands of dollars for, for an hour's worth of time with me, but you get it for free. So when I spoke to Jay and Jay shared his vision with the Honey Badgers and what he was creating also inside this umbrella, I'm sitting here going, an agent would be foolish to have even look at a commission split. Knowing, so let's just say Mike brings over a team and let's say his commission split changed. So his agents now maybe will pay 10% more than what he's paying for him. What Mike could sell, say to these guys is, look, you just took on all these other trainers and coaches that are mega agents and supersize and all you're paying is an extra 10% for it which is going to help your business tremendously to have people like Daniel Beer, Kyle Whistle, Jennifer Weiner. I mean, the list goes on and on of people that are willing to give selflessly because it's the greater of the company. I've never seen anything like it to be part of EXP was, was a brainchild that Glenn had. That was just unbelievable because I believe in, being around like-minded people, there is no value you could put to that. So that's why when I look at splits, if somebody gets it and understands what they're getting for that split, it's not just their team leader anymore. They're getting this whole package. Wow, it just blows my mind. Yeah. Let, let's, I learned that firsthand. I just want to touch on one thing. Because when I was running my brokerage, um, we got to a point where uh, you know, I ran it with ran it with my wife, and I go, who who do you turn to for advice? Who do you who do you have help? I mean, I've been mastermind groups, and I go walk out, and I go, I got nothing out of it. Nobody really shares nothing. So, what we had to get to is we got to a point we were doing about seven hundred million a year, and it was kind of leveling out, going, you know, because I believe in who you surround yourself with is that important to get you to another level? But I keep saying, who the hell am I going to surround myself with? So <laughs> we sought outside of the real estate industry. I said, let's, let's get outside of the box. I want to grow. So we sought out Dave Ramsey and Entree Leadership and flew to Tennessee, met with Dave. Um, you, you get around people like Gary Kelly, uh, the, the CEO for Southwest Airlines, Dan Cat, the owner of Chick-fil-A, Alan Malati, the, the CEO for Ford Motor Company. Th these, are, these are mega people. You don't even find people like this really in the real estate industry. So here's where I could tell any agent out there that what they have at their fingertips being at EXP is mind-blowing, but you got to utilize it. So I, I surrounded myself with those type of people and in one year, we took our brokerage then from 700 million to 1.4 billion to last year doing 1.9 billion. Awesome. And it's solely now because not that some magical thing came out. It's when you surround yourself with like-minded people, it, it just blows my mind. So, so when I spoke to Jay about EXP and, and the more and more I see people like you guys coming in, I'm like, you, you have no idea that when we tap into this synergy, no company can comp compete with us because we all have a valued interest in growing EXP. I work with agents that aren't even in my downline. They call me from all over the country, and I'm so glad to help them. They, they, it's just... Blows, Chuck, blows my question is not for the agents, but for the brokers, for the brokers that are in your position when you were having that conversation with Jay Kinder 
and you you actually saw it for the first time when the brokers are considering moving their brokerage over or moving their team of 50 or their team of 100 or in your case of a team of what 800 mm -hmm. over so so i just move, want to be clear um my wife still runs revelation real estate i couldn't move my brokerage over because my my brokerage is too big of a conglomerate and it's it's a polar opposite model of exp but what i did is i'm running exp and i've already had over a hundred a hundred agents move okay. from my brokerage and we'll keep doing that it's just because the level i was at with the infrastructure of staffing i i would have had to fire everybody and and I, i'm just not that type of a person yeah. Yeah. so so to me my main focus 100 percent is exp to grow the the biggest business I could there, because if I can grow what I grow in 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 a backyard, I, I'm going to grow something massive. But to answer your question, which is a good question, if there was a team of fifty, a, a brokerage of a hundred, or whatever it is, I could easily overcome any objection they have of why they wouldn't move the whole brokerage, because just fees alone and the headaches of dealing with brokerages and lawsuits. It, just dealing with that alone so took away from my time of doing what I do best, and that is training, mentoring, and growing agents now across the country. Yeah, so let here, there's a lot to dig into with what you guys have said, um, because if, if I'm an outsider looking in, right, and I tuned in and I want to hear something uh, about commission splits, um, and Chuck, when we talked about this beforehand, we talked about the, par the mind shift, the, the paradigm shift, essentially that um, and, and, and Brian, this is this is everybody, right? I mean, every this commission split thing has is, is been the um, it, it's it's been the thorn in the side of the, the broker, the thorn in the side of the team leader for years and years and years and years, because there's commission split, right? In one hand, and then there's value, right? There's the treasure, and then there's the map, right? Well, one doesn't exist. The, the map doesn't exist without the treasure, right? It's a trick question. If I ask you which one's more valuable. The real answer is the map, right? And what Chuck is saying is that we we have to stop leading with commission splits, right? We we cannot we while it is important to address because at the end of the day, people want to know um, how much money they're going to make. It should be a byproduct of the value that you're already offering because essentially, I'm only concerned with how much money I'm putting in the bank. If I if right. if, if I if if you're giving me a hundred percent and I'm doing one deal. Or you're giving me 10% and I'm doing 10,000 deals and making a million dollars. It's like, I, you know, I, I cannot choose the 100%, right? And so we, how do we shift the mindset of the individual agent, of, 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 the, of the team member to, um, to that conversation? How do we shift their minds? Chuck, you can speak directly to this because you do it all the time. So tell me about. So that, that's a good question. First and foremost, what, what, I, what I say to people is because I, I study people. I understand the psychology of a person, that people are wired differently. I'm big in the DISC assessment. Uh, Dave taught us that wholeheartedly, and it changed the whole way I think. And here's what I mean by that. If, if you take somebody who's, if you guys know DISC assessments, an S or a C, you, and you say, I want to change their mindset to be a D, a driver, <laughs> It ain't gonna happen. No. You're, you're you're fighting against you're fighting against a feudal battle. So the thing I always say, and, and I'm gonna get to that because I love what you said about the the what is the problem with teams because it's not commission, and and I'll address that in a minute. But what what I look at is when I look at agents or people, I'm I always say to myself, and I've did this my whole career. I'm looking for people looking for me, and I and and I'm not going to sit and try to swim upstream all day long because I could just go start swimming downstream and I'll catch so much more momentum. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. The problem that EXP solves with teams is not the commission. Now, now they got a great split compared to anybody, but I, I don't even look at money. The problem they solve with teams, and here's the number one problem with teams, is that team leaders get in and team leaders, are, they're drivers. They're not S's and C's, they're drivers. And they get in there and they'll get their S's and C's and S's and C's like to be around other people. They feel comfort in that. 
drivers, even if you want to offer, uh, offer tremendous value and you make them successful, most drivers are going to go at the end of the day, listen, I, I appreciate what you did for me, but I'm going on my own. You can't, that problem couldn't be solved in the regular real estate brokerages. EXP solves that problem by going, great, you're on my team, you paid me the splits, you got what you got out of me, oh, you're ready to go on your own, excellent. Now let's build you a team right. and utilize what we have. What we gotta get out of the mindset is there's hundreds of thousands of agents out there and there's tens of thousands that need us we just got to approach them the right way. We got to stop trying to convert the people who just don't get it. Believe me, I talk to agents all day long who just so focus on the mindset of money and splits. And then at the same breath, I'll talk to somebody. They don't even ask what the split is. They just want to know, are you going to help me? I want to learn from the best. I don't care what I pay you. You see, and you guys both experience that. That's what we have to focus more on. And EXP solves that problem. Yeah, I think, I think you hit the nail on the head when you talked about liability. And you talked <laughs> about uh, another department we have is accounting, right? So we don't have to worry about that completely. And the fact that the agents get uh, stock as they produce as well, in addition to the revenue. So there's so many other ways that, that agents are benefiting uh, when, the, when the team moves over, where the brokerage moves over that uh, we can't provide in the collaboration that you absolutely nailed. In this, in this model, I've been looking at it for two years, been involved with one year. Uh, I have seen more collaboration in the last yeah. eight to 12 months than I have seen in the last 20 years of doing this. And it's absolutely off the charts in terms of collaboration, giving that you both talked about. It's absolutely amazing. You can't, you, we've all paid for it, right? We paid thousands and thousands of dollars for the best coaches. And at the end of the day, uh, you, you are, you know, around the top five people you surround yourself with, you're that person, right? So we're, 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 I, I, I want to try to extract something from what you just said, um, because it was, it, was, um, it, was, it was kind of an aha for me. It was like, you know, I want to be in business with the people that I want to be in business with. In other words, I don't want to work with people who are resisting me, right? right? I, I don't. Because that's that's a waste of more time, energy, and resources Correct. than it is to invest that time into finding people who are interested in working with me or hearing what I have to say or being a part of our culture of learning. So quit trying. I guess the advice here is, is if 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 somebody starts in on you um, about a, on a, about a conversation on commission split. I mean, there's a way to deviate from that. And then if they continue to bring you back to the commission split conversation, it's probably time to end the conversation and go find someone who wants to talk about education, bringing value and actually making more money, not commission splits, but making more money. Right. Mike, you nailed it. You nailed it. It's just a it's a different way of phrasing stuff. And and the thing that that I'm, I'm telling you, I just. I'm just so excited about the future of this company. And what I have is I got to now form relationships, true relationships, not, hey, I paid you to be a coach, I paid you, true relationships that we now have a bond to grow a company together. And we're, we're like this, this ball just going down the hill. That's as you gather and attract more producers, we, we become this massive field of energy that that I'm, I'm having relationships with like jay kinder and michael reese and albie and i got a guy jim brooks in vegas like, i'd have never met these people i don't think i've ever would have met you never alone have a connection that i go what could i do to impact your business be surrounded by like-minded people and here's what happens you attract like-minded people you there's there's one person you got to talk to your blue in the face to try to convince them and then over here you talk to somebody that it here's what they say i get it speak no more i get it it's the same thing with selling real estate when you have a client that you're working and working and working and then you run into a client that goes yep where do i sign the contract yeah so we that's the mindset and we the biggest thing i think we have to do is i almost want to do another video of what does it mean to recruit? Because I use that word loosely. It's really attract. Mm -hmm. I will teach people how to attract agents all day long using, using resources that they never even thought of in real estate. 
because it's all about relationships. I get that. You meet somebody's needs and you grow a relationship, then they'll listen to you. We got too many agents in EXP that are just trying to ram down their throat residual income. And those are the ones who kind of give us a bad name, but that's okay because I'll just rise above that. What's interesting is I think Curtis Johnson nailed it. You know, two years ago, uh, they were talking to us about there's nobody at EXP. There's no, there's no producers. Nobody's selling homes. And wait a second. Over the last 18 months, we have seen the largest teams from Century 21, Keller Williams, Remax, Independence, $100 million producers, $200 million producers, people that sell 200, 300, 500 homes a year, 1,000 homes a year, all moving over as a herd to EXP. Now, if you're looking at that from an industry standpoint, look at Brad Inman talking about that, there's a disruption that's happening that's not being stopped. It is literally at a momentum where that train is now moving and everybody's noticing, wait a second, all of the producers are moving to one company. Yep. Very, very interesting to watch. And, and we, all have a, we all have a buy-in, which is different. Because if I was Keller Williams and all the producers were moving over, there's still no collaboration and buy-in. They're still independent of each other. You know, yep. there's no greater power than human connection. None. I don't care what technology is out there. So we're marrying unbelievable technology with a human synergy and connection of like-minded people. It's just going to grow. It's yeah. going to be the, the best thing we've ever seen. Yeah. And, and what, one thing that I don't want to overlook here, too, um, is that, you know, here, here's I, I've thought about this and thought about this. And I'm thinking, you know, to your point about D's, right, like IDs is that I, I think the conversation needs to shift to, you know, quit focusing on building a team, quit focusing on building a business and start focusing on building a legacy, right? How many, how many times you have an opportunity in the history of real estate to actually go out and build a company, right? That's right. And, yeah. and that's what we're doing. Yeah. We're building a company, man. That is leaving yeah. a legacy like no other. Together. It's, it's crazy. It, it's, and, you, and you even said it, I go, when could I ever have the opportunity? I literally get emails from agents all over the country in EXP that are not in my downline saying, hey, could you talk to me about this? Could you? And, and you, you nailed it. it. To me, it's not about the money. The money happens. It's about the connections. It's about the legacy. It's about I'm going to build something better than anything else I could possibly imagine. I, I built one of the biggest single office brokerages in the entire country. And the leverage I have with this makes that look like child's play. We're playing in a different playground than all these other companies are playing in. It's, it's incredible. Yep. Yep. I agree, man. I agree. So, so the, the whole, the, the funny thing is, is everybody that started watching this was hoping we get into commission splits. And while we did dabble in, in commission splits and we, and we do think they're important, we, um, we obviously, we, we, we shifted the conversation to start talking about, and this is, this doesn't matter what company you're with guys. I don't care who's watching this. Um, you want to, you, you've got to start to have that mind shift yourself about how you talk to agents who are joining your team or your brokerage, because it's not about the commission split. At the end of the day, here's the brokerage that'll win is the one that provides the most value. Not listen, there's a hundred discount brokerages in my marketplace and they're not the biggest company. Listen, I, you know, I could leave here and go get a hundred percent commission split and pay three ninety five a month and get zero value. That's what I'm not interested, I'm not interested. There's nothing that comes along with that. So, you know, yeah. that's what everyone needs to realize is, is you need to start looking for value. Are you getting the value in for the money that you're paying? Are you getting the value out for the money you're paying in? Right? Yeah. yeah. When we moved our team from Remax over, we basically said we're throwing out the whole uh, team model completely with the commission splits and let them operate their business 100% on their own. They started at 80%. And I'm here to coach them. I'm here to help them. I'm here to support them. And I'm here to create all-stars like yep. I've done in the past, but didn't get paid for, right? Yep. But now they can operate their team. They can, they can grow their organization as big as they want to grow it. And I am here cheering them along and giving them all the resources, not only that I can provide, which is great, 
But what you can provide, what Chuck can provide, what Jay can provide that are off the charts, that they would have never had, a, to Chuck's point, they would have never had the opportunity to have those resources at their fingertips in, as new agents with zero to five years. They would have never had that opportunity unless for some reason they're an all-star. And for most agents, they, they, don't, they don't reach that level for a long time. So at the end of the day, by, by doing a decentralized team model, is what I called it in the interview with Jay, is a decentralized team model where you can actually take your team and grow your group in as many states as you want. Yep. And, is, and, and here we go, opening up uh, the rest of the world, right? We're in Canada, going expanding to South America, onto uh, Australia, Europe. The opportunities are endless, and we're just on the foundation. And, and I will tell you, anybody out there listening, you call me anytime. I don't care whose downline you're in. I don't care what company you're in. Like I said, this platform is what I've been praying for because God's given me a gift. And my gift was just squashed in one spot. Now I could take my gift and be a blessing to anybody that wants. And, and I live by Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. This company was built on that foundation with one of the best systems on the back end. There, there is no stopping us. So I appreciate you guys very much. I love it. I love it. I love it, fellas. Listen, this has been really fun, man. I, 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 I love, I love, you know, talking about just, I mean, real estate in general is my life, man. And as long as we can and put together videos like this to add value into other agents lives, man, you know, we, we got to keep Thank doing you, it. Thank you. Uh, Brian, I appreciate you, you know, coming up with the idea and, and Chuck, man, I appreciate you jumping in on short notice and, and, uh, and, and sharing all of your infinite wisdom. Is there anything else you guys want to add before we put a bow on this one? I'm just really grateful for you and Chuck putting this together and uh, just really adding a lot of insight because at the end of the day, these are questions that uh, broker owners are wrestling with and also agents on a smaller level as well. And, and I think, but this conversation from, Years of experience is going to add uh, one more one more food for thought as they continue to take their journey to investigate EXP. Yep. And, and real quick, so people can connect with you guys. Chuck, give your contact information first. If people, if, where do you where do you prefer people contact you at? Um, it, yeah, they contact me at Excel Training at Gmail .com. So it's X S E L L training at gmail.com and I, I want to leave it off with one word too guys we're only as good as we are to keep doing things like this um to to form that bond to form the relationships and the community because that's what will make us unstoppable uh, we cannot have a scarcity mindset like the other businesses out there we got to constantly stay we partners with each other connected pull for each other. And I'm going to tell you, we're forming a company full of unbelievable ownership, which is all of us. And it can be unstoppable. So, so I'm, I'm blessed to be part of this. Absolutely. Brian, how can people connect with you, brother? Easy to remember. Brian Sousa at gmail.com. Brian with a Y is yes, let's do business. B-R-Y-A-N-S-O-U-Z-A <laughs> at gmail.com. I love it. I love it. I love it. Listen, and if anybody wants to connect with me, you can just go to meetmikewall.com and schedule time with me. I'd be happy to jump on a call, answer questions with you, help you grow your business. Um, guys, thanks so much for joining me, and I look forward Thank to doing you, this again Thank in the future. Chuck. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Brian. You guys have a great day. Have a great day, you guys. See you guys. Bye.